Gabriella waiting with all of us to see if the return would clear the net. Well, Jennifer having to cover a lot of court once again from deep in the backhand side to deep in the forehand side, and the only thing she could do there was throw up the lob, which actually barely landed over the net, and it was a difficult shot for Sabatini to hit. Again, Miss Precocious has the advantage. And Jennifer has been called put fault in a couple of her other matches. And what? Pegged it perfectly, did she not? To hold service. And she takes the initial game. What love. I think it's very important for Jennifer mentally to lead in this second set. If she can, she served first, if she can hold on to serve each time and perhaps get a break on Gabby, then her game starts to flow. Jennifer Capriati winning the French Junior Championship last year, also the US Junior Championship was a quarter finalist at the Wimbledon Juniors, which won the doubles d junior title at Wimbledon and the US. She is the quickest to reach a final professionally. Doing so on her first tournament. And her idol, Chris Evert, reaching the final in her fifth tournament, as did Monica Selish. Tracy Austin, another famous American, reaching her 11th tournament. Unbelievable. And Andrea Yeager at her 13th. And in terms of years? It's to turn pro. Jennifer turning pro. 13 years and 11 months. Kathy Rinaldi was 14 years, 4 months. Mary Jo Fernandez, 16, 14 years and 6 months. And Mary Jo, on your screen right now, unfortunate that she had to forfeit to Gabriella Sabatini in their semi-final yesterday when she pulled a hamstring muscle. following the overhead smash. And once again, Jennifer letting that ball bounce, a great idea, and then just waiting for Sabatini to commit herself. Sabatini's service broken but once in our opening set, that in the second game. quite successful with that drop shot especially when it goes to Capriati's backhand she makes sure that Capriati's way over in the forehand side so that she has a lot of ground to cover and the ace her first And that's a perfect serve right there, wide to Capriati's forehand. Great anticipation from Gabby. It wasn't a particularly great volley, but she was looking for the forehand from Capriati to go down the line, and you can see how she'll move to cover that forehand. backhand rather deep in her court and it has not worked 
Uh, well, that wasn't a high percentage drop shot that time. She was trying to drop shot to Jennifer's forehand side. And Sabatini not having quite as much room to work with. Still serving to even us a game apiece in set number two. you know or if you are just joining us set number one belongs to Sabatini 6-4 Claudia Porvik pounded on a weak second service by Capriano and thought that that might be her Achilles heel in advance of this match. So much for theories. Well, I think as the match goes on and Jennifer gets a little tired, her second serve might be a bit of a weakness, but uh, she puts a lot of kick on it, so it bounces a little high. So even though it, it lands short, still jumps up and into the player, gets a bit of distance from that. unable to return the ball. Well, it was a good forehand from Sabatini because it's got a lot of topspin on it and you can see it just dips, dips right at Jennifer's feet. And it was a very difficult shot for Jennifer to hit. Gabriella Sabatini won a silver medal at the 98 Olympic Games in Seoul. The ace by Capriati. And it will be interesting to see if Jennifer Capriati plays tennis at the Olympics for the United States in 1992 when we play in Barcelona and it was a great service wide to Gabby's forehand and that was clocked at 86 miles per hour. Ace number two. the bracelet that she wears on her wrist. Oh. A gift from her heroine in Chris Ebert. is very close to the Ebbett family and Chris Ebbett has a home just a couple of hundred yards from the tennis club here at the Polo Club and Jennifer has been spending a lot of time at Chrissy's house before she plays her matches but Chrissy's not there she's in Aspen but Chrissy has been talking to Jennifer before she plays all her matches to her backhand is Capriati and Sabatini takes ready advantage of it. Reduce. Capriati serving to claim a two games to one advantage as she did in the first set before Sapatini rallied.
opportunities lost against a player the caliber of the world's third rated Gabriella Sabatini are rarely realized again and it is break point for Gabby. Well, Jennifer's turning the tides. This time she's running Sabatini from side to side and waiting until she gets the ball to hit it into the open court. It's been Sabatini who's been moving Capriati around a lot in this match. And it's always a good idea if your opponent's moving you around and wearing you out, then turn the tables. Do the same thing to them as they're doing to you. Wear them out. on her face what she has to do to win a point and look against another player uh, another player might have given up on that shot but Capriati is right in there and that brings up second break point for Gabriella Sabatini Sabatini approached the net. Well, it was a fairly good approach shot from Sabatini. High bouncing topspin, but she really should have covered the shot down the line because there wasn't uh, much else for Capriati to do with that. And we're at just number four in this game. Net ball! A third opportunity for Gabriella Sabatini to break Jennifer Capriati. And both players working extremely hard out there. No one's giving the other any free points. But she does. Capriati is broken for a third time today, the first time in this set. Two to one, Sabatini leads after taking the first six points. Match that he recalls between Suzanne Leglon and Helen Wills. It must have been some match. And Ted recalls it as if it was yesterday. This match an hour old as Sabatini leads 15 love. And a lot more unforced errors from Jennifer. 17 to Gabby's 12 and those extra five unforced errors being very expensive. Jennifer, the down-the-line forehand winner. 
and she catches Gabby off guard. Gabby just uh, perhaps looking for the forehand cross court. Sabatini and Knotts at the net. And it was a great cross-court backhand from Jennifer. Perhaps the approach shot just a little too short from Gabby. Sabatini with well, the, the winner. The crowd not particularly happy with that call, but I think the ball got the line. But Jennifer not giving up on any shot. She's even running for that one. surrendering service for only the second time this afternoon. Two all, second set. Ted Tinling joining all of us in thinking this is the most eventful debut. As you see the service breaks since Chrissy Ebert landed in London <laughs> back in 72 for Wimbledon. In the international scene. Just a little unfortunate that didn't come over, but I'm sure Jennifer was going to be prepared if it did. Been magnificent if it had. Might have been fun to see the return. Long. Saved by the sail. easy overhead for Gabby to hit because that ball was looking right into the sun. It was a good idea from Jennifer. But Gabby not trying to hit it too hard, just looking for placement. opportunity to claim a three games to two advantage. Oh, 
what a great return from Gabby off quite a good serve from Jennifer. Gabby being very aggressive on that return of serve. Just moving her feet, moving right into it. And Gabriella with service. The winner to pocket $70,000. And I need the second double fault from Gabby. hundredth point of this match <laughs> earned by Capriati. The points even now for the afternoon at 50 apiece. <laughs> Sabatini facing triple break point. Thus far, this has been her least impressive game today. She double faults to finish it. Indeed, that's the case. A very bad game for Gabriella in this searing heat. You see, she is drenched in perspiration. Well, it's a very tiring match for both players. They're moving each other around the court. And uh, it's just a very hot and humid day out here. And the players are working extremely hard. And that was a very big game in this match. Steffi Graf winning the championship here last year. We'll get another look at that in a moment. Duel at the net. <laughs> Playing as if she wants a crown here in Boca. Well, that was more like a short lob than a drop shot from Gabby and not a very smart play. If Jennifer plays quickly, and if indeed Sabatini's tired, now is the time to press. Jennifer not giving up. And Jennifer, this time, she's taking her time. She needs to get a couple of deep breaths. That was just an unbelievable point. Sabatini. And Sabatini. 